What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So happy that you are here. Today's topic is don't be so hard on yourself. You're human. So don't be so hard on yourself. You're human. You've done a lot of things that you wish you would have done differently. You have made a lot of mistakes. Maybe you've mistreated people in the past in different ways we all have. But don't be so hard on yourself. You're human. And we're going to kind of go into this uh, I guess a little bit deeper, but not really. And I was sitting here thinking when I was writing before this, what is it I want to talk about or what would what's the message coming to my heart and my mind in which I can share with people that I think would help. And for some reason, there was an instance that I had, and, and I've, I've experienced this a lot, and I'm sure you have too. You might even be this person. There's a girl at work, and I was working with her, and uh, she wasn't doing anything wrong. We were just like working and stuff, right? And she kept going, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was like, hey. I was like, there, don't be sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. Like, it's you're not even doing anything wrong. Like, it, like there was literally nothing she was doing wrong. She just kept going, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. And I was like, don't say sorry. You're not a sorry person. And so I guess that's where this video comes from. It's kind of been on my mind and my heart about how so many of us, and again, if you're watching this, you might be one of those people or maybe you were one of those people where you are a people pleaser or you were a people pleaser. Everything you do always seems to be wrong or not good enough. So you're always like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean that. Oh, I, oh I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Or maybe you're someone who you always feel like you're a burden to other people. You never share anything about your life or yourself because you feel like it's a burden to other people. So you could be going through an absolute crisis, yet you're like, oh, I don't want to tell them. I'll just deal with it myself. You know, I don't want to be a burden to other people. So you feel like you're a burden. You always feel like you're doing something wrong. Uh, you always feel sorry. That's where this video comes from because this girl, and of course, many other people I've experienced in life and I used to be that way too. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's like, you're not doing anything wrong. It's all good. None of us are doing anything wrong. None of us even know what we're doing out here. Just the people that think they do are the ones that are good at faking it and think that they're perfect. But those are the people who are the most like in pain and suffering and their ego is just really trying to cover it up. So anyways, uh, I shared the other day, I've been reading this book called Letting Go of the Pathway of Surrender by Dr. David R. Hawkins. His first book that I read, Power vs. Force, fantastic, highly recommend you read it. And I'll start off today by sharing something from Power vs. Force. It's basically a quantitative map of consciousness in a numerical value. So from zero to a thousand, each one of these numerical ratings has an emotion associated with it, which is your level of of consciousness, your vibration. On the scale of consciousness, shame is the lowest vibratory human emotion, vibrating at a frequency of 20, all the way up to enlightenment, which is, you know, Jesus or Buddha, these enlightened beings all the way up to a thousand. And I believe love vibrates at 600 or 700. Uh, and I, I won't get into the whole scale. I just want to stick to the bottom ones because that's really where I think this comes from about you feeling sorry, about feeling you're a burden. Uh, you why you're so hard on yourself you always think you're doing wrong everything you do is never good enough on the scale of consciousness shame is the lowest vibratory human emotion at 20 and then guilt is right above it at 30 and so if you're somebody who is always hard on yourself you know oh, everything I do is not good enough right even though you've got a family you've got kids or whatever your situation you know you've achieved this big achievement and especially that's a sign that this is you if you're someone who like has achieved great things or even if you hadn't, haven't, but everything that you do, you never give yourself credit for and you just immediately move on. You don't feel that anything you do is good enough. So you're always hard on yourself because you need to do more because nothing's ever good enough. You're so hard on yourself. Please don't be, you're human. So I bring these up because what is shame? Shame is the feeling, the emotion of like, your and, and I had, didn't look any of this up, right? I'm just gonna and I'm, I didn't even really think of it beforehand. So to me, shame is feeling ashamed. You're like shame and guilt. I think this is why they're so close. It's like you're guilty for who you are or who you've been or the things you've done or haven't done. And shame is like this projective emo, projecting emotion from other people of like you should be ashamed of yourself. You're not good enough. It's literally like right above the most animal base human instinct. We're almost not human when we're vibrating anything below shame at 20. 
I mean, anything below 20 is at zero. You don't have consciousness. You are, you're like, you know, our wonderful other friends in the animal kingdom who don't have a prefrontal cortex and the cerebellum and all these things. Shame is such a low vibrational emotion. You feel that you're just like, you don't even want to exist. Like you're not good enough at all. It is the worst. And then you feel guilty for everything you do. So you feel shameful that you're not good enough. You're just so hard on yourself. Well, let me tell you something, especially if you're watching this video, it's because you probably are a light worker, a star seed, a healer, someone who has, you're the black sheep of the family. Everybody has basically dumped their shame onto you and made you feel like you should be ashamed for who you are. But it's because you have such a bright light, they wanted to suppress that positive emotion and your light from shining. So they tried to make you be wrong. It's like you're always feeling wrong. Again, I'm sorry, oh, I didn't even do anything. Oh, I'm sorry, you just feel like you're in the way. You feel like you're a burden. You're not. Society, especially parents, teachers, and media, it's all designed to shame you and it's designed to shame you and make you feel like you're not good enough so they can subconsciously program that exact thought and belief into your mind that you're not good enough. That's what shame is. For instance, you grew up and you got like a 3.8 GPA. Oh, that's that's okay, you did okay. You're still not good enough. You didn't get a 4.0. Oh, well, you got a 4.0. You should have been in honors and AP classes. You didn't get a 4.3. Nothing is ever good enough. You're ashamed for these things. You just got a promotion at work and people around you are jealous, so they make you feel wrong. Oh, that's like, cool. I mean, congratulations, that's cool. But yeah, you know, uh, like Sophie, she just did that, you know, that what she was doing that five years ago, right? Like everything's to like minimalize what you've done to shame you to make you feel like you're not good enough. This is what society does, especially parents, teachers, peers, people, just people, human beings. But it's all wired in order for you to stay in a low vibratory state of low self-worth so you can't create that life of abundance and more importantly you're not motivated to break through those barriers and beliefs because you're vibrating at such a low emotion and such a low energy frequency you can't even begin to think of what your life would be like because you don't even love yourself enough to think when what is it that i want it's even hard to visualize or think about that because you don't think you're worthy of that so it can go that deep but even when you have healed or you're healing and you've reached these thresholds of healing and you feel that I'm recognizing my self-worth, I'm doing this because I love myself, it can still creep in, this shame and this skill. I'm just here to remind you, don't be so hard on yourself. You've made mistakes and you will always make mistakes. That's what life is. I always think it's so funny when you do something, maybe you start a new job and like other people, like they try to shame you because you're not as good at it as they are. Or you don't know as much or whatever. And it's like, bro, I've barely been doing this, man. You've been here for what, six years? But you know why they do that? They do it again in most people, society, parents, teachers, peers, media, society, you're not good enough. Let me put you down so I can make myself feel better because I actually really feel ashamed. But any threat to me feeling any low level of worthlessness isn't gonna happen because I'm gonna tell you how you're bad at all these things. It's programming, guys. You just be easy on yourself. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. We're human. You screwed up a lot and you're going to. That's what growing is. That's why most people stay the same is because they're afraid of the feeling of shame or guilt that comes from failure because they don't have the right perspective about it. I shouldn't say they all have the right, right? Because that's me becoming, that's me injecting my own ego in this place of self-righteousness like I'm right and I'm wrong and I'm and they're wrong and I'm not and they're not. But what it is, is it is a constant projection of trying to make you feel bad because they feel bad. So they want you, they want to put you down. So why am I saying this? Why does this topic come up? I'm trying to, my intention is to help you become aware that the only reason if you do feel like you're someone who's really hard on yourself is to become aware that it's actually not you or you only are hard on yourself because of what you've been programmed to believe, that you're not good enough, that you don't deserve to have the things that you want to have, that you're not worthy and that's the baseline belief. I'm not worthy of this, I'm not good enough. So don't be hard on yourself. It's to get you to become aware of how you're, where first of all these beliefs have come from and then also how to start undoing them. So examples again, society, parents, teachers, media is, is designed to shame you with the underlying message, you're not good enough, that's bullshit. You got an A minus, your mom said, that's not good enough. Oh great, you got into a, a major university, you didn't get into an Ivy League, you know what I mean? Or like, oh, you know, um, oh yeah, you know, you start dating this new guy and your friend's jealous, like, oh, he seems like a great guy. God, he's kind of like, 
you know, blah, blah, fill in the blank, right? They just try to mentalize that people can't help themselves. They don't even realize they're doing it a lot of the time that they're trying to put you down or whatever so they can, again, tell you that you're not good enough in some way or what you're doing or whatever. Those are just people to avoid, to be honest. But anyways, uh, your first race ever, you've never ran, uh, you've never ran, I don't know, you're a, a track athlete um, or whatever, you just started picking up um, bowling and you like really like it and you become a competitive bowler and you do recreational tournaments. Your first tournament ever, you came in third and someone on your team, you know, comes in, they go, oh, you got third? Be like, oh, dude, that's all right. My first tournament, I got first. You know what I mean? Like they're just trying to bring you down. So don't, and then again, why, how does this relate to you being hard on yourself? By everybody always telling you you're not good enough or trying to put you down in these ways, if you allow it, it will program your subconscious mind. You'll always be hard on yourself. It plays on your self-worth. So this is why it's important. You lost weight. You look amazing. You lost 35 pounds. Your clothes don't even fit anymore. And they go, they go, dude, you look good. They're like, you know, you know, whatever. But they, it's like a backhanded compliment type of thing. Oh, you look good, man. But you know, they either start talking about themselves or they'll try to downplay like the success you had rather than being like, you look amazing, man. I'm like, couldn't be happier for you. Like seriously, awesome. That is freaking fantastic. Just leaving it at that. So this is people's, most people's subconscious programming. So this also, you're hard on yourself and feel like you're not good enough. Maybe you're a high achiever. So I will share a conversation I had with one of my really good buddies yesterday. And this man is an amazing man. He's like in the Peace Corps. He just got his master's degree. He's pursuing his PhD. And uh, we were talking about it. Uh, so we're going to go to Tony Robbins together later this year. But we're talking about it. And um, he's like, man, I'm just so busy. If you're one of these people that's always busy, you don't have time for yourself. And you're like, I just wish I had more time or they never have enough time in the day. This is also because you fill your day with so many things and make yourself so busy Okay, because you don't feel like you're good enough. So you feel like you have to do more and more and more and then you burn out and then, you, you know, you fill your life and you're just like so busy to the brim. You never have time for yourself. It's a way to avoid that feeling of unworthiness that you have underneath. So it goes pretty deep. So we were talking about it and he's like, man, I'm like, you know, we're starting to write my dissertation. I'm going to my classes. I'm also teaching. I'm still bartending. He's doing all these things. And he's like, yeah, I want to do that stuff. I just don't have time. And I was like, well, what's the ultimate goal? And he's like, you know, to start working for myself. So I eventually can, you know, I'm getting the PhD so I can build my business and I, you know, work for myself and then be free and be able to spend more time with families. And I was like, look, I'm not trying to talk you out of getting your PhD. You're already like doing it. You're already pursuing higher education. But what would it have been like if you would have spent all that time and money on the PhD and the masters and just built a business? Do you, what's the piece of paper for? What is that proving to yourself? What do you need that for if you already feel like you're qualified building your business? And so we went deeper and he's like, damn, like I kind of helped him realize like, oh, I, you know, need this piece of paper so that other people view me a certain way so that I can feel that I'm good enough. So now I can go build my business. It's like, bro, you already had everything within you. You're already smart enough unless you're building a specific business with that degree based on like, you know, or it's a required qualification to build that business. Then bro, what are you doing? You know? And again, I'm not here and dissuading anyone from higher education or personal achievements but it was for it's basically for his ego so then he can say oh you know now I'm, i can put the doctor behind my name and i have a phd so now when i build my business even if it fails or whatever i have the respect of all these people that i'll never meet in my life and again please don't take this out of context i'm not saying it's a waste of time or you shouldn't pursue higher education i'm just using it as an example to illustrate and help um, and how he became aware of, oh my God, my need to prove myself by getting a PhD is because I have a lack of self-worth. That's what I'm saying here. So please don't take it out of context about, oh, you're saying I shouldn't become a doctor or do these things. No, do that if that's what you wanna do. And that's what I told him. I was like, bro, that's what you should do. This is near and dear to your heart. And if that's what you truly need to feel fulfilled, then get it. But even then, right? Recognize like you're pursuing this thing just so you can feel fulfilled. What if you just felt fulfilled? What would your life be like then? So, you know, and not saying, you know, again, everyone has their own path. If you have to, if you have to or want to do that for yourself and that's a personal goal, please do that. Again, don't take it out of context because it, it was weird. I could feel myself communicating that like people are like, oh man, you know, right? Because again, people always want to make you wrong. And I'm like, dude, I'm clear and direct in my communication. I mean what I say and I say what I mean and I own it. And if I do make a mistake, absolutely. I will own it and be humble with it and, and learn from it. But I want to be as clear as I can when I communicate here. 
So if you, here's the thing about why this is important, why you shouldn't be also so hard on yourself. If you're so hard on yourself and you're always beating yourself up, putting yourself down, shaming yourself, guilting yourself, you feel guilty, well then you're never gonna allow yourself to be happy because you're shaming yourself and you always feel guilty about everything you do. So if you always feel guilty about everything you do, <clears throat> then you're gonna feel guilty about having good things. You're gonna feel guilty about being in a good relationship. You're gonna feel like you're not good enough for your partner. You're gonna get a raise and feel like you're not good enough because you're subconsciously programming yourself and allowing other people and other things, places, all these things to program you that you're not good enough. So if you're not good enough and you feel guilty about it, you're gonna self-sabotage and that's why this is so important. So if you're someone who's hard on yourself, you feel guilty, there's an element of shame there, there's an element of unworthiness there and this is why it's so important. The greater life that you want, the money, the career, the relationship, the ability to travel and have more adventure, the health, all that thing, it comes to your by your self-worth. You will only allow yourself to have the life that you want on a conscious, physical, tangible level that's concord, uh, concurrent with your level of self-worth down, be down below. Like the law of attraction says, you don't attract what you want, you attract who you are. Well, if deep down you're very hard on yourself and you have low self-worth because you're really you feel really guilty and ashamed of your past or whatever allowed people to make you feel in the past that you weren't good enough, X, Y, Z, well, then you have a low level of self-worth. So then no matter what you do on the surface, no matter how hard you try, your life will just reflect that lower self-worth. You won't let yourself have the $200,000 salary. You're only letting yourself have the $100,000 salary. And sure, you might get to that $200,000 salary, but then if you feel guilty and you don't heal it and really allow yourself to grow into that role, you subconsciously will self-sabotage yourself in some way that will bring you back down to that level of self-worth. So it goes deep, but it doesn't have to be. It's just you understand how these layers of ourselves are related. You can only bring in, if you don't feel good enough, you will always attract what's not good enough. So if you always have this underlying level of low self-worth, you're only gonna allow yourself to have a low self-worth level life. So you've got to do that. You can only bring in what you desire based on your frequency and your vibration. So if you feel like, oh, I'm sorry, you vibrate at shame or guilt or anger or resentment or pride even, you're only going to bring in things that are concurrent with that level, the map of consciousness. You constantly feel shameful or guilty, or maybe you are feeling really good, but then you're like, oh, here's that old belief that came in. You feel shameful or guilty. It's gonna bring your vibration down. It'll block the blessings that wanna come into your life. You'll self-sabotage great situations and opportunities. It's, it goes on, on a very deep subconscious level. It's, it's mental, it's physical, it's spiritual, it's all this stuff, guys. So if you always say sorry, like you're doing something wrong, you feel like your existence is wrong. Stop doing that. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? You're not doing anything wrong. These people, every, we're all doing the best I can. Now, of course, if you intentionally make a mistake again, please don't take this out of context and you're like walking through and you have a drink and spill it on someone, you say, I'm not doing anything wrong. I didn't, I didn't mean to, it was an honest accident, so I'm not gonna say sorry. No, I mean, we're talking about being kind here common sense and courtesy, right? Please don't take this out of context. Doesn't mean, oh, I'm never sorry. And now I have an excuse to, you know, like a buffer to be an asshole and say, well, I'm doing the best I can. And uh, Pierce says I'm, you know, shouldn't feel sorry about anything. So I'm gonna treat everyone like crap and not feel sorry. Dude, don't, don't take it out of context. You guys get what I'm saying. So what do you do about this? How do we change this feeling of being so hard on yourself? shaming yourself, feel guilty like you're doing something wrong or like you, more importantly, don't deserve the things that you actually want. Think about that, guys. If you really want these great and amazing things but you don't feel like you're worthy on a deep level and you haven't worked on this stuff, you're never gonna get that stuff because again, every time you climb, climb the ladder, you're gonna self-sabotage or something's gonna happen or whatever and you're just gonna pull yourself down to that level of self-worth. You gotta heal this stuff on a deep level. So what do we need to do to change this? to raise our self-worth. I wrote down some stuff here. Subconscious beliefs. You have to work on your subconscious beliefs. How do we know what our subconscious beliefs are? You increase your awareness. Meditation. When you meditate and you make a consistent practice of it, you'll start becoming aware of these thoughts of, and you'll be able to catch them throughout the day and being like, you know, oh, I made that mistake. Oh, I'm an idiot. And if you meditate and you start becoming self-aware, you'll realize like, whoa, dude, that's crazy. I just called myself an idiot. 
and sure it was a joke or it didn't mean anything. Yes, you did. We've talked about that in the video I made about how your words are very powerful. You meant exactly what you said. You think you're an idiot because you made some small mistake. You're not an idiot. You did. You made a mistake. Whatever, dude, you're human. Sis, you're human. Whatever, you screwed up. Everyone screws up. We all screw up every day. Who cares? Forgive yourself, forgive others, move forward. Again, don't sit here and use it. Don't take it out of context. You know, oh, whatever. I you know, spilt my drink on this guy or hit this person's car. I'm not sorry about it. Pierce said not to be sorry. It's like, no, dude, you still are responsible for your thoughts, words, and actions, but you guys get what I'm saying. So self-conscious beliefs, you have to reprogram your self-conscious beliefs, your subconscious beliefs first by becoming self-aware. Meditation is a great tool for this. When you consistently meditate and you start to become the observer of your thoughts, you'll start to catch them throughout the day. Those little slips like, uh, oh man, I'm stupid. Or, oh, whatever, man. Oh, I'm just, I, I'm not going to get in. I'm not smart enough. Or however you talk to yourself, you'll start to become aware of these thoughts and be like, dude, who is telling me that? Is that me telling me I'm not smart enough? Or was that my mom telling me I'm not smart enough because I didn't get a B and I got a C? So you'll become self-aware first. And then that helps you become aware of your beliefs and then you start to reprogram your subconscious beliefs. All beliefs are, are thoughts, but they're thoughts that have been thought over and over and over and over again. Both your parents and your teachers telling you you're stupid, you're worthless for your entire life up until you're 15, 16. And then when they release the grip on you, the damage had been done because your mind as you're growing up for over a decade of your life, you've been subconsciously programmed that you're stupid, you're not worthy, you're not capable. So now you have low confidence because you've been subconsciously programmed. So you have to understand now that growing up like that, being subconsciously programmed, you've probably lived your whole life to where you have a boatload of experiences that have reinforced how you're stupid or you're not worthy or you're not capable because since you believed that when you were young, your experiences, you are creating that reality because we create for, from our subconscious and you yourself sabotage yourself or screwed up over and over. And now you go, well, no, see, look, I, this is why I'm stupid because look at all this stuff I've done in the past. No, that was your programming. And then you built experiences that reinforce that negative programming. So this is how we fix our self-worth. Stop being so hard on ourselves. We become aware through meditation, through journaling of our thoughts when we become aware of our thoughts, when we understand that these thoughts are also our beliefs because these are the thoughts we've been thinking. So now we just start to think different thoughts. And as you think different thoughts over a period of time, and then every now and then you'll have an experience that backs up that new thought, it becomes a belief, a new positive belief replacing the old one because you've thought this thought over and over and now you start to have experiences that are new, that are uncomfortable because you've been having bad experiences and you go, whoa, holy crap. This woo-woo weirdo stuff's working. I've been thinking positively and really helping me change my self-image and all of a sudden, I can see it in my reality because this person came into my life, this relationship, I would never get compliments like that. I never would feel so confident doing this type of thing, stepping into this. I'm growing, I'm changing. So it's a lot of hard work and patience and consistency, but when you do it, just like working out, you'll see the results finally in the physical form. So number one, awareness, subconscious beliefs, rewriting those subconscious beliefs by thinking the thoughts over and over. And as you do that, watch what will happen. Positive experiences that start re reinforcing, you'll start to notice too. Positive experiences will start to happen in your life that reinforce these new positive beliefs. And you'll sit there and you go, whoa, that's crazy. Like you'll have moments of epiphanies, right? Realization to go, whoa, like that's crazy. That was an experience that like backs up this new like thought pattern this new belief that i've been trying to instill in me is it's crazy how it works it's cool uh delayed gratification is also how we save our uh, save or develop our self-worth and stop being so hard on ourselves you made a mistake you screwed up you're learning a new skill you're doing a new job you're doing something different you're supposed to screw up you don't know how to do it so instead of trying to uh you know, take a shot and a quick fix of the pain that you feel because you made a mistake, own it and understand again, what's the story you're telling yourself? Oh, I screwed up and I'm an idiot or no, I screwed up because I've never done this before, but I'm capable of learning it. It's just going to take time. So what is it I need to learn from this mistake? See, reframe over time, you get better and better. You'll become your biggest cheerleader, your biggest supporter. And that's where true power comes from because now you're independent of the good opinions of other people. You're woo, becoming empowered. You're developing a new identity. This is you. This is you stepping into your greatest life.
So delayed gratification. Really loving yourself and knowing you're worthy of something is willing to be uncomfortable. You love yourself enough to be uncomfortable to grow, meaning you step out of the old patterns and you have these new situations that are uncomfortable and they're supposed to be because they're new. If it's comfortable, then you've already done it before. And if you've already done it before, that's great if it's something you want more of. But if you're trying to outgrow and out create, create a new situation and circumstance in your life based on new beliefs, you don't want comfortable. You don't want familiar. Because what was familiar, you're just creating the same thing you've always created. You're onto something bigger and better now. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is huge. So you've got to forgive. You've got to forgive yourself and understanding the best that you were doing the best you could and forgive the other people that they were actually doing the best they could even though they didn't mean it. And we gotta do a video on forgiveness because this is a huge subject and something that was so hard for me for so long I really didn't understand it. Forgiveness is not forgetting what someone has done to you or acting like it didn't happen. Forgiveness is letting go of the past so that you can move forward and you're not carrying the weight of the past. You're not holding on to that resentment and anger. You're freeing up energy and um, creative energy within yourself instead of using it to hold resentment and bags from the past. It's not forgetting. It's learning the lesson and reframing it in a different perspective so you can be at peace with the situation. Not for them, for you. You have to forgive yourself. You have to really forgive yourself. But you really have to forgive the you know a lot of people in the past right and usually your parents a lot of forgiveness uh, with your parents you have to separate yourself how do we raise our vibration how do we stop being so harder you have to separate yourself from toxic people places and things don't be around the people places and things that are programming your mind that you're not good enough even social media your girl trying to get in shape you're looking at all these super hot ass chicks on instagram if they're positive and they're empowering and they're like this used to be me you can do it girl go for it but if they're sitting there looking look how fucking hot i am oh this is great like look at my ass and like that's cool and all if that's motivating to you and really driving you to do that that's great but if it's like look at me you're not and you feel that oh and you're sitting there again self-awareness looking at these pictures and being like i'll never be like that oh they have it all they you know god picks favorites there's you know she's just her genetics i'll never be like that well then that is not empowering at all so that is a toxic sense of that's a toxic media if every person you share your goals with or whatever is trying to bring you down instead of empower you, those are toxic people, toxic situations, relationships. If every day you walk into a job and you absolutely hate it and it's just people complaining about all this stuff all day, you gotta get out of that environment. Separate yourself from toxic people, places, and things because especially if you're just waking up or you don't know a lot about energy work and protection. And I'll talk about more some of the esoteric spiritual things that I want to teach about working with energy and energy protection again crystal energy and meditations and and cleansing your aura and things like that uh, as we go along here but these are the messages I feel that I'm supposed to share right now so separate yourself from toxic things people light some sage in your car in your house I'll go over a little sage ritual too there's so much to talk about um, on how to clear your energy if you're fortunate to be in a, uh, close to an ocean go get in an ocean or even a lake any body of water or even an Epsom salt bath that's amazing some essential oil in there chill cleans your aura and your physical body it's a beautiful thing separate yourself from toxic people places things don't be around the programming meditate meditate as uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer j joked about uh, Deepak Chopra in one of their conversations anyways um, meditate. Meditation will help you become centered and be the observer of your thoughts so you can become to be aware of your thoughts, become to be aware of your behaviors on a way that maybe you've never viewed them before or seen it like before. Incredibly powerful. Visualize. I'm going to do actually a guided meditation uh, on this for free. Visualize the best version of yourself. It's called, um, so I didn't know, I thought it was called future placing or future pacing. It's called future pacing. And I looked it up. It's actually an, uh, an NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming Technique. I've never looked up NLP, but I know that I kind of do it just like I've never been certified and all that stuff. I probably will just for fun because that sounds interesting to me. And I think that'll probably enhance my ability to communicate uh, effectively and help people. And it's just interesting to me. Again, do what brings you joy. Do what is interesting to you. Okay, that that's cool make a note of that clearly i'm supposed to study some nlp stuff anyways visualize the best version of yourself this is called future pacing when you find yourself in a problem 
or feeling down, somebody shamed you at work or you made a mistake or you have something in your life that's difficult, do your best to become aware of your thoughts and your feelings and be present with them and just think about what would the best version of you do? The abundant, healthy, fit, sexy, confident, authentic, loving, vulnerable, powerful person that you are that's living that vision in your future who's a multimillionaire with an amazing family and partner and kids and um, you know, uh, contributing to the community, whatever your vision is, that version of you, how does that version of him or her think about themselves? How do they speak? How do they handle themselves? How do they handle this situation? That's the highest version of yourself. That's your higher self. That's your soul. That's your oversoul. That's your higher mind. How do they do that? I, I need to put a practice in it. I do it often, but, um, I need to sit there and do a future pacing visualization every day, every day, every day, guys, seriously, because the more you do it every day, the better you get at it, the better you get at it, the more real it becomes, the more real it becomes. Eventually it's like a seamless integration. And that's kind of how I felt this morning on a side note. Like I felt I, I got a really good night's sleep and I was just chilling and I had the day off. I was like, I'm not gonna do crap today, but I was sitting in the afternoon and playing with Manny and my dog. And I'm like, I'm like, no dude, I want to go and read and write. I'm going to go to my, go to a different coffee shop that I like. So I got the day off today. I'm going to do my reading, reading, writing. It's like, I still want to make a video. And the realization I had was like, I know that like, this is a, a part of my path. I know that this is going to open up a lot of opportunities for me to speak in public for businesses, for organizations, run my own events, all these things. I know that this is what I'm made for, but for today, it's just so funny. The future pacing, I felt like literally today I'm like, dang, this is crazy. You know, in a year, three, five, 10 years, whatever it is, when all that stuff manifests itself in the physical plane, I feel the same as I feel right now. I just want to get up and help other people by sharing what I've learned. And also more importantly, being open to what I still need to learn and grow. Like this is, this is me. This is how we're doing it guys. So hopefully those practices will help keep an eye out. Cause I am going to do a free guided meditation on future pacing, visualizing the best version of yourself. I'll probably do that with it. I made a note to do it uh, on, on my phone for the next video. But sometimes when I sit down and I write, there's like another message that comes through that I'm just supposed to share or speak about. So we'll see. But it, that that is definitely in the plans. So quotes I leave with leave with you for today. First one, Eleanor Roosevelt. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Love that one. So don't let anybody make you feel like you're less than who you are. You're amazing. You're awesome. Do you have flaws? Uh, yeah, you're human. What, you think your favorite actor, actress, musician, whatever, you think they don't poop? You think they don't fart? You don't, you think they don't, they're not human? You think they're better than everybody else? They're human. If you cut them, they bleed. They still need oxygen. If they stay up for a week straight, they'll go insane like everyone else. They still need sleep. We're all human, man. We all do these things. We're human. So don't be so hard on yourself. And don't let other people make you feel inferior or ashamed or anything like that because they're having a bad day. That's their own crap projected onto them. So you either stand up for yourself in those situations, which is very empowering, especially if you're afraid to use your voice, or if you are a little more attuned to energy, you're in your power, it may just be a situation you need to get away from. So you can discern for yourself. Second one, wanting to be someone else is a waste of the person you are, Marilyn Monroe. Wanting to be someone else is a waste of the person you are. You're amazing. Don't be so freaking hard on yourself. You're going to get to where you're going. And the cool thing is, is you're watching this video. You're probably doing all the uh, other stuff like reading books and, or whatnot. Or even if you're not, just you watching this video tells me that you're someone that's about making your life better. You're trying to figure yourself out. You're trying to figure out what you need to heal, who you need to become, how you need to change in order to create the life that you want. You're on the right path. Don't worry about other people. Focus on you. Focus on you and the right people will come. You're on your way. That's why you're watching this vid. I love you so much for it. The last one, love this one. Too many people overvalue what they are not. Let me see this better. Too many people overvalue what they are not and undervalue what they are. Start valuing yourself for who you are now. You don't need to do anything differently. Well, you may need to, I take that back. If you understand what I'm saying, like you're just learning. We're all learning. These people who know, think they know everything and they're all rich and successful or even they're not. Anybody who thinks they know what you should do with your life, dude, that shows the most ignorance and those are the most insecure people. Now, of course, mentors and guidance and there are people that can help you guide you and advice that you should listen to. Please don't take it out of context. 
but um, it's more about self-discovery. That's what this journey is about. You have the answers inside of you and you will get them as you tune in. Man, we, I just was like talking extra fast today. And this video still ended up being long, but whatever, this is the message it needed to come out today. So we'll pull an Oracle card, tap three times two, clear the energy. We ask for the purest and most divine truth and my highest good, your highest good and the highest good of all. Ooh, that's the one. That's the one. Oh, we got this one the other day too. Man, got two of them. This is the one that came up. This is the one supposed to do it. Seven of Raphael. Look at the picture first. What resonates with you? Thoughts, people, situations, whatever comes up. Reflect on that. Your soul is trying to speak with you and there's insight and hidden meaning for you individually in that picture. The message is time to make a decision. Be clear on what you want and take action. A need for detoxification. So maybe you, what's coming through is really maybe you need to, dude, maybe you need to cut like a close friend off that you've had for a long time and you realize she's super toxic or he's super toxic and it's really difficult for you to do. That's what comes up. Or you need to cut off a family member. It doesn't mean you don't talk to them forever, but you really limit your time and set a boundary as to who has access to your energy. The more you ascend, the more darkness you're gonna attract, but you're also going to attract a lot of lightness too. It's just, you know, it's, um, we'll get into another discussion about that another time. So be clear on what you want, set intentions, take action. So be clear on what you want, time to make a decision. Again, this whole message is about you improving your self-worth and you're so hard on yourself because you feel you're not worthy or you're doing something wrong, shame and guilt. Get rid of that stuff. Start working on your self-worth and be clear on what you want and take action. Know you're capable. Know you're worthy and deserving of it. That's what comes up for me. Seven of Raphael for you. Time to make a decision, man. Sis. Seven of Raphael, time to make a decision. You may feel the situation is too complicated, but further research will, will reveal the right course of action. Intuition provides useful guidance on how to sort through all possible choices. Listen to your inner voice. Don't be lulled into daydreams. Get clear on what you want and then take action without looking back. If you're drawn to a t particular bucket on a card, the shocker color means uh, holds meaning and guidance in the making of your choices. So it's like I was saying, you look at that picture. Let me show it again. Which bucket, which color lights you up? That may be a chakra that you need to work on. Look up chakras. We can do a video on chakras and stuff too. Energy centers, the foods associated, what happens when they're overactive or underactive. Man, there's just so much to teach and so much to learn too. Um, additional meanings of the card. Unrealistic expectations, procrastination, confusion, indulging in excess and need for detoxification. So the big one that sticks out for me, for myself, detoxing people and places right now, I'm good on that. Detoxing my body, I feel fine with. So again, I'm just reflecting. So clearly the message that I wanna share with you is, cause I, when I come into these messages, I really set the intention to be of service. So when messages are coming through to me, it's not, it, it may be for me and I reflect on that later, but it's usually for you. So. The detoxification is the big one. I feel like a lot of you guys, man, you got to cut out the bad habits, cut out cigarettes, or if you have a sweets addiction, cut out, you don't have to cut them out completely. Like, dude, go and have a chocolate chip cookie every now and then. But if you're like constantly having a bunch of sweet, salty snacks, maybe you need to detox that out. Maybe you need to stop eating out and eating fast food so much and, and cook. Maybe you need to get out of a toxic workplace. Maybe it's a toxic parent you need to get out rid of or a toxic sibling you need to limit your time with. Again, doesn't don't take things out of context. Doesn't mean you cut these people off, never talk to them again, unless you think that's the best course of action for you. But the big message in there for me was detox and then get clear on what you want. Vision, intuition, vision, intuition. Tap into your intuition. Know your vision is real and that's what you want. Elevate your self-worth to be coherent with that vision and everything will start to manifest. It's happening for you because you're watching this video and you're doing the work. So so much, uh, I love you so much for that. The fact that you're doing the work because unfortunately a lot of people aren't yet, but we're here to show them the way as we lead by example. That's what I got for you today, guys. Dang, that was a long video. I feel like I have so much more to say too, but we'll leave it at there. See you tomorrow. Love you, bye.